So the first thing we're gonna do in this class is actually review something that you learned in Algebra 1. When you learned it in Algebra 1, it was on the level of Algebra 1, but in Algebra 2, we're gonna bump it up a level. So domain and range, which is a big topic in Algebra 1, is also a big, big topic in Algebra 2. It is also a big topic in pre-count calculus when you get to it. So we need to be able to talk about domain and range and know what it is pretty, pretty well. Okay, so domain, definition. The domain is the set of all possible values of the input variable. We're looking for the word input right there, or independent. Or you probably know it as domain is the x value. That's still true. Domain is the x value, but we're going to call it the independent value. For continuous graphs, so graphs that are connected together, it is read from the left of the graph to the right of the graph. Does this sound like things that you've heard before? Yeah, hopefully. It's in your brain somewhere. That's the word domain. Range is the set of all possible values of the dependent, or yes, the y value. So we're gonna call it the dependent now, which yes, is that y value. Does anyone remember how it's read on a graph? Bottom to top, very good. Yeah, so we want to go from lowest to highest. That's just a good way to write numbers. So we're going to go from bottom to top. So our, just like our y-axis goes up and down, our range is read up and down, specifically bottom to top. That's how we list the numbers. We also, when we talk about domain and range, talk about how things are related together. A relation is any pairing of inputs and outputs. So again, any time that there's some x's related to some y's, it's technically called a relation. In this case, outputs and inputs can repeat all they want. But in a function, this one is very specific, a function is a relation that pairs each input, x value, with exactly one output, y value. So what we said in Algebra 1, and it's LOL, huh, a typo on this page, cross out this word outputs. Can we fix that sentence? What cannot repeat for it to be a function? Does anybody remember? I yes, not outputs, but inputs. inputs. We're going to call the inputs because it's easier, the x's. In math and in life, you should not repeat your x's. Okay? So a function means that the x's cannot repeat. They do not repeat, which is also calling them our inputs. Our inputs cannot repeat for it to be a function. We're going to be dealing mostly with functions in this class because that's what most of mathematical functions are, <laughs> lol, functions. So we need to know the difference between a relation and a function. Now, here's just some visuals here to help us remember domain and range. Dr. XY and Dolor the robot. Dolor the robot is a visual to help me remember that domain is read from the left to the right of the graph, LR, left, right. And robot is to remember that it goes from the bottom to the top. Dr. XY, does that sound familiar to you as well? Also helps me remember what letter I'm talking about with domain and what letter I'm talking about with range. Domain is the X, range is the Y. Now here's the thing about Algebra 1. A lot of what you did was multiple choice. So you are very easily able to eliminate answer choices if they had the wrong letter in it. Great, awesome, that's why it's an Algebra 1 skill. You are now in Algebra 2, so in Algebra 2 skills, we're just gonna be given blanks and we're gonna have to write it all ourselves, okay? But all of the things you learned in Algebra 1 are going to apply. So when we're reading a graph to talk about its domain and range, we still read from the left to the right and then the bottom to the top. All we have to do is put it in that particular way. So what I first want us to do, if we're looking at a graph to determine domain and range, is go to the very left of the graph. Is this the furthest left that my arrow can go? No. Is this the furthest left? Is this the furthest left? Absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that little dot. We're going to draw an arrow down to the x-axis because the x-axis is for the domain. And we're going to put the same kind of dot that is on the screen. That is a closed dot. So we're going to put a dot right here. That's the first number in my domain. What number is that? Negative one, fabulous. We write a negative one on the line. Since that is a closed dot, <coughs> sorry, we need to give a symbol right after the negative one in my domain, an inequality sign. 
Since it's closed, does this inequality sign have a line underneath it or does it stay open? A line underneath. If the dot is closed and you had to fill in the dot, you have to fill in the symbol. So if you fill in the dot, you fill in the symbol. Okay, great. What letter was domain? X. Okay, and X goes next. Then we go look at the right side. Is this the furthest right that the graph can go? No. Is this the furthest right that the graph can go? Yes. Okay, great. So we're going to draw an arrow up to the X axis, since we're looking at the domain. We're going to get the same dot. So should I leave that open or closed? Open. Fabulous. What number is there on that, num on that number line? Five. Okay. So we put a five at the end. We just need a symbol in between X and the five. But since that's an open dot, do I put the line underneath the symbol? No. no. Very good. That's it. I'm done. All we're saying is that this graph shows up on the number line between negative one and five. And isn't that number line exactly where the graph shows up? It like bookends or puts a little square around the entire equation. We're talking about all of the input values or the x values that can be used in this function, in this relation. Okay, we're gonna repeat those steps for the range. First of all, what letter is range? Y. Okay, we can just go ahead and start with that if you want to. And then we need two numbers. We need a bottom and a top number. Somebody take a wild guess. What's the bottom number? Three. Three. Is this the bottom number? No. Ooh, I heard, I heard it. Is this the bottom number right here? Yeah, that's as low as the graph goes, right? We're not looking at the beginning value necessarily. We're looking for the lowest point. That's the lowest point, so we're going to put a circle right there. And what number was that? Negative. negative one with an open circle. So do I put the line underneath my inequality? No, no line underneath it because it's open. Then we need the top number. Is this the top of the graph? Right here? Is this the top of the graph? No. no. Oh, good. Most people say yes right there. That's not how high it goes. Isn't this how high it goes? And how high is that? Four. Four. So it's just like saying that the height of this graph goes from negative 1 to 4. Now, I bet you you're thinking, Ms. Quigley, there's not like actually a dot right there. So why did you put a filled-in circle? In math, you can assume that it's a filled-in circle unless you actually see a gap right there. So unless there was an actual pole, like a circle without being filled in, you assume that it's closed. So you would put the line underneath it. Wow, look at that. We just wrote the domain and range. For this function, we told you where on the x-axis and where on the y-axis this graph shows up. You've given me some locations for it. The last part of this question is deciding if it's a function or not. Okay, we said the definition of a function is what? Who can answer that? What was a function? Very good. And what does that mean, cannot repeat? The x's cannot repeat. Are there any repeating x's in this graph? Yes. yes, where? Negative 1 has repeating x's. There's two things right here. Not negative 1, guys. What are we talking about? 1, right here. Do you see how this has a vertical line? That means that there is a dot here and a dot right here. If I were to give those coordinate points, that would be 1, 1 and 1 comma 2. Do you see how those x's are repeating? We can't have that. So this is not a function. One of the things maybe in eighth grade you learned about to talk about whether something's a function is called the vertical line test. Do y'all remember that word? Something like that. So the vertical line test means that all you are doing is you are taking a vertical line and you are going to test it across the whole graph. If at any point this one vertical line touches two dots, like right there, it is not a function. All the rest of this graph is fine, but since this part right here touches it twice, it is not a function. That's called the vertical line test. Questions, comments, concerns? Does this sort of sound like something we learned before? Okay, great, that's what I love to hear. We're gonna do this next example because this kind of encompasses everything for what's called a bounded graph, meaning it has endpoints on both sides. 
What's different about this number two? Does it have boundaries on both sides? What do I mean by boundaries? Dots. Dots. It has ending points on both sides. What do these arrows up here mean? It keeps going. This is called an unbounded graph. Technically, it's bounded below because there's a stopping point here, but there's no stopping points up here. So something's going to be a little bit different about this, and that's okay. We're going to attack it the same way. For a domain, I'm looking which directions? Left to right. Left to right. Okay, on the left side, what do you see? No. An arrow. That means that I'm going to draw an arrow on my number line. What number happens as you keep going on this number line this direction for forever? Technically not infinity, because what kind of numbers are these? Negative. So it's going to be called negative infinity. Very good. Okay. So my number is going to negative infinity, because that arrow goes out. What do you see on the right side? Also an arrow. So it's going to keep going out this direction, which is what? Positive. Positive infinity. Great. The biggest number you can think of, infinity. Fun fact, did you know that if you ever tried to count to infinity, you would die before you finished counting to it? Because you can't actually count to infinity. Too many numbers, uh, right, uh-huh, same. Okay, so if we're doing our domain, and we did it exactly like we did the other one, we'd say the left number is negative infinity, and the right number is infinity. Does someone remember something about this from Algebra 1? We can answer this in a different way all when numbers. there's double infinities. All, numbers. all real numbers. Fabulous. So all real numbers is actually how we would answer this. Does anyone remember the fun, fancy shortcut for all real numbers? ARN. You could say R A R N. I get what that means, but there's actually a symbol for it. Oh, yeah, it was like the double it's R. R. It's the fancy yeah. R. Yeah, the fun and funky R. That means all real numbers. I will accept all real numbers, the words, ARN, because I get what that means, or the mathematical symbol for all real numbers. But this is only when you have double infinities. Okay. In Algebra 1, you are not allowed to leave infinities in your final answer. In the next couple days, probably in like a week, I'm going to teach you the Algebra 2 version where there is a way you can leave infinities in your final answer. But for right now, I prefer all real numbers. Okay, let's do the range. Where do I start on the range, top or bottom? Bottom. bottom. Okay, what's the bottom number here? Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, I'm going to put a dot right there for negative 3. And that means I'm going to write negative 3 down. What's the top? Infinity. infinity. How did you know it was infinity? It keeps, it keeps going. We've got the arrows up on top again right here. So since we have those arrows, we know my number line goes on and on to infinity. So that means I'm going to put an infinity here. And a y in between them. Now we're still using technically Algebra 1 rules, which means we can't leave this infinity sign in my final answer just yet. I haven't taught you how to do that. So we're going to cross it out. Make sure you can still see it since these are your notes. You know why you crossed it out. And like this would be technically OK. But when we have what's called a one-sided inequality, meaning there's only a number on one side, you want to write the inequality with the letter coming first. Yeah, it starts with Y. Very good. What else? You got that comment. Mm -hmm. you, say, you say equals? So instead of saying negative 3 less than or equal to y. If I wanted to flip it around, I would say y. Than. Flip everything greater than or equal to negative 3. Yeah, you just got to flip it around. That's going to happen from time to time when like, like this is correct, but it's not as correct as possible. Mathematicians like writing the letter first when it's a one-sided inequality. Okay, so make sure you flip that sign if you're flipping the order. Negative 3 is less than or equal to y is the same thing as y greater than or equal to negative 3. But I like this one better. Okay, question. Does this graph pass the vertical line test? Yes. Yeah. yes. So is this a relation or a function? function? A function. Very good. All we have to do is vertical line test. When it's you on your paper, you have a pencil that's vertical. Hopefully you don't have a bendy pencil. You can do the vertical line test yourself. Yes. Okay, now that's literally all we're going to do for notes today because, again, it's just an Algebra 1 review. We're at the point where we need to practice. Are there any questions before we head out to practice?